Welcome everyone to a new episode of Genuine Rockstars and today's Genuine Rockstar is Darren Naish. Thank you so much for joining us today, Darren. Thank you very much for having me and thanks for the invite. Could you tell our audience a little bit about who you are and what you do? So I'm a combination of uh, a research scientist. I am attached to the University of Southampton here in Southern England and I do work on mostly the predatory dinosaurs of the English early Cretaceous. Uh, but I also work as a freelance um, author and consultant. So on the side, I'm also doing books and articles. I, I generally publish one or two books a year. And I also work uh, for TV companies. I currently work for the BBC's Natural History Unit. Um, and I'm associated with the Apple TV Plus series Prehistoric Planet, which uh, debuted in May 2022. So, yes, I'm a research scientist, but I actually make my living from consultancy mostly involving dinosaurs. You specialize in vertebrate paleontology and in writing. So what got you interested in paleontology in the first place? For me, um, vertebrate paleontology, dinosaurs, and the other fossil animals I'm interested in, I love them to bits, but they're not necessarily, they weren't necessarily my target. I wasn't like aiming to become a paleontologist or aiming to become a vertebrate paleontologist. I've always been obsessed with animals. I was always, I've been committed ever since I was a kid to, I want to study animals. I, I regard myself as a zoologist rather than a, you know, I work on fossil animals, but I don't see myself as a geologist and not that interested in rocks and stratigraphy and such. So, um, yeah, I really wanted to become a qualified zoologist. I would have been happy to go through the life sciences and end up studying field biology, ecology, functional morphology of living animals. But as it happened, various you know twists and turns during my life meant that I did end up um, uh, studying geology and specialising on paleontology and from there moving to dinosaurs, which I'm perfectly happy with. But um, I regard myself as, you know, well, I am equally interested in living animals. So you write a blog, Tattoo, uh, and you write a lot of books. Um, and recently you actually managed to cover one of my favorite groups, Sauropterygia. What made you write, What made you decide to write a book on, on marine reptiles? So I've I've wanted for my entire adult life to do a, a Mesozoic marine reptile group, not just Ropterygians, but all the marine reptiles. And I've pitched it several times. So, you know, got on as far as producing spreads with, you know, like draft illustrations and draft text. I've done that several times. And it's always failed because the publishers have said, no, there's, no, there's insufficient interest in this. No one, no one wants to put the money into it. No one wants to pay you. But off the success of the Natural History Museum's Dinosaurs, How They Lived and Evolved, which I co-authored with Paul Barrett, published that in 20, uh, a couple of years ago. <laughs> um, that was successful enough that the the publishers there said, would you be interested in doing a marine reptile group, group book? And I was like, heck yes, but I can't fit it into life. I do not have time. So they were like, well, okay, we'll give it to someone else. And I said, no, don't. I really, really want to do it. So um, I had to, I, I put a lot of blood, sweat and tears into, into finishing this book because I've wanted to do it for years and years and I'm really happy with it. It comes out in February 2023. How did you end up becoming a scientific consultant for, well, among others, Prehistoric Planet, which I think is the main, the most popular one? Yeah, uh, it's kind of it's kind of a long story. So to keep it very short, a part of my consultancy uh, jobs, I have become known to people in the TV world that make TV shows uh, about prehistoric animals, largely because of a job I had in 2007 with Impossible Pictures. That's the Walking with Dinosaurs company. Um, but the people behind Prehistoric Planet wanted um, various consultants. They basically went round, not the world, they went round the UK talking to all of the people that you think you might approach as a potential consultant for a series. They ended up using nearly everyone in some capacity, but they ended up choosing me as the one that they wanted to use the most. And I would say that's because of my combination of uh, expertise in terms of like, you know, the fossil animals combined with knowledge of behaviors uh, and life appearance of, of living animals, which is really crucial to this series. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, it's a combination of like, kind of being in the right place at the right time in terms of my career and availability, but also in terms of being known as the person that's attached to, you know, the sort of stuff that you would want for making a show like that. 
then we're going to go into sort of the meat of it. So when does it go from like speculative art to science based science fiction? I mean, by now, a venom spitting Dilophosaurus has made it to the books that people gave to my son. And I would say that that's pretty much science fiction. Yeah. But yeah. at the other end, it's if you're just going at face value, then you can never describe much more than a bunch of bones and maybe some fragments of skin. So you need something intermediate. But where would you draw the line? Mm. Yeah, this is this is the big question, really, isn't it? Um, and you've touched on it, you know, covered it very well. And every expert has a different opinion on this. Of course, there's multiple shades of grey between. On the one hand, some people that are almost like nearly anything goes when you look at what exists in the living world, all the way to the other spectrum, the other end of the spectrum, where it's like we should stick only with what we know from the fossils. And prehistoric planet kind of tried to find, no, not tried, prehistoric planet found a sort of middle ground that is acceptable to the majority of people, but of course not to everyone. The great problem, of course, with making a TV show about extinct animals is we want to show these things as living animals. And if you're making a natural history series, you need to show them doing all the stuff that living animals do. Interact, mate, be born, swim. Yeah. Yeah, they don't just stand around and eat stuff. <laughs> they do a lot of that, but they do some other things as well. And, and obviously, what's in a BBC style natural history series exactly what you've just said you need to show interesting behaviors and you also the way that the documentaries are structured you can't just show in this scene we see the animal eating in a clearing second scene in this scene we see another animal also standing in a clearing also eating and next scene we also see this animal eating as well you've got to have like one's got to be a uh, a combat story one's got to be a predation story one's got to be a reproduction story etc especially if you want to keep your audience in because nowadays people watch tv like this and only when you something are... exciting happens they will actually well it's that's that's a non-trivial observation you have to fight so hard to um yeah to get to maintain people's interest so uh, wherever possible, we did base things based on the fossils that we have. We often spoke about using what we called smoking gun fossils, things that actually show a specific piece of behavior that we think happened, you know, species A et species B, that kind of thing. Or they did that in this particular pose. For, for so many of these animals, they're literally known from a single incomplete specimen that's it they're known from one incomplete specimen this animal must have it must have existed in its thousands tens of thousands hundreds of thousands of millions it must have been a lot of them they must have mated and fed and slept and done all these things so again if you're going to betray them as a living animal what are you going to do you've got to have some acceptable level of speculation and as you've already said, we kind of went with something that seemed appropriate. And we always knew that some people would push back. There always are some people that's like, you don't know that Carnotaurus wiggled its arms like that. It's very unlikely. Yeah, sure. But it's like, we needed to show something and what you're going to do. You can't just show the same thing every time. And I think actually that that's also where, where, where we convey the magic that is paleontology, because... Uh, we are always dealing with filling in the blanks and it's nice to do so. It's nice to show people how we think they walked, how we think they made it, how we think they interacted because we can never know. Yeah. So no, it, I think it's nice. Uh, I love it. And one of the things that we are careful to justify in this as much as possible is, well, wait a minute, this is a behavior that might seem strange to you, but it's known in crocodilians and birds how do you like to spend the hours during which you're not writing or sleeping? There's not many of them, I, I know by now. Um, paradoxically, perhaps I'm an incredibly lazy person and I find it increasingly important to like sit in front of the TV and do nothing in the evenings. So I try and do that. Hanging out with my wife, of course, who's the most important thing to me. And I increasingly probably cherish time in the natural world. I mean, if you follow me on social media, I'm talking like nearly every day just about going to local woodlands and, and stuff like that. So I find going to uh, what I jokingly refer to as natural spaces, because they're not natural spaces at all here in Southern England, but the green spaces that exist, going to them, going out walking, 
is crucial to me. I watch a lot of terrible films, so go to the cinema fairly often, watch a lot of terrible television. And I'm a fairly social person. I like hanging out in pubs and bars and stuff, so I do, <laughs> do that when I can as well. So, um, so I do all the sort of stuff. I have no interest in sports. I don't do any sporty stuff. But, um, but otherwise, yeah, sitting around doing nothing, drinking, watching films, and going walking, looking at birds and whatever other animals I can find. Yeah. Thank you so much, Darren. You're a genuine rock star. Thank you very much. Great to talk to you.